I'm here with Larry Pesavento on the floor of the 2012 New York Traders Expo. And we're talking about Fibonacci ratios and how you use them in trading. So Larry, talk about the basis of Fibonacci ratios in trading. Well, it's probably one of the more misunderstood things in technical analysis because you know, when Elliot first started to talk about Fibonacci ratios back in 1938, he basically only brought out 618, 382, 50% and 1.618, but he neglected to look at the square roots of these numbers, which if you go back to what Pythagoras did when he started, you know, sacred geometry and stuff, and being the father of geometry, he was the father of uh, using um, sacred ratios in a square root basis, and that's where you really have to look at the square roots of these numbers, uh, square root of 618, which is 1 point, or 786 and the square root of 1.27, which is 1.618. So this is why it's important. So Larry, when you talk about these Fibonacci ratios, are you watching them for places where price is going to turn? Actually, what I'm watching for is the trend. And if you realize the market can only do one of uh, three things at any one time, it can either go up, down, or sideways. So if the market is going up, I'm looking for higher bottoms to be a buyer. If it's going down, I'm looking for lower tops to be a seller. And if it's going sideways, I'll trade both sides of the range. And the Fibonacci numbers basically tell you the ratios of what it's contracting to or what it's expanding to. And I basically only use, you know, the four ratios, 618, 786, 1.27, and 1.618. Retracements get a lot of talk in, in media, but not as many people use extensions. Why is that, do you think? Well, most people don't like to sell into strength or buy into weakness. But professionals, that's what they try to do because that's when your risk is the smallest. And we're concerned about how much we have at risk, not how much we're going to make. And so if a market's going down, if we can correctly time the price of where we think it's going to enter, either rightly or wrongly, we know exactly what we're going to risk. And if our payout is better than three to one, and our profit objective, or, and our probability is better than 70%, that's an ideal situation for trading. How should I actually put on a trade with these ratios? If I, am I looking for somebody to come back into a 618 and put my buy right there? Yes, what, you, what you're looking for is you prepare the night before or the day before or two days before, whatever you're ready to trade, and you have this predetermined spot based on these patterns and ratios that are completion that are completing, and as soon as they hit that level, you're ready to act. Now, there's only one situation where you don't act at that time, and that is if there's a huge gap coming into that time frame and price that you want. That's telling you that there's a great deal of energy in the market, and you want to wait till that dissipates before you enter. So you wait a few bars, either dailies or hourlies, whatever it is, to make sure that the you don't have to catch the falling knife syndrome. That's, That's what you're looking at. And how far away should I put a stop from these levels? That bases on your, your risk parameter. And uh, if you are willing to risk a lot, then uh, which I don't think is the right thing to do, you can use a wide stop. But if you do your work correctly, you should place it with the amount of money that you want to risk at any one particular time. Frankly, someone with a, a very large account like you have, Tim, I would use about 1%, I would think and you would be fine. That would mean you'd have to be wrong uh, 50 or 60 times in a row to get your equity at the 50% level, and the odds of that happening is pretty much an outlier event. Well, I'm still working on that huge account, but I'll let you know. Okay. Larry, thanks for your time. Thank you, Tim. You're watching the moneyshow.com video network.